Paul Cimiak was born in Poland and emigrated to Germany with his parents. Today, he's the leader of Germany's Young Conservatives, and I'm speaking with him about migration and political clarity. Welcome to the DW interview. Thank you. Mr. Cimiak, who would you like to see win the next Football World Cup, Poland or Germany? I get asked that a lot. The answer is clear, Germany. Poland too, right? Oh, of course, I'm happy when Poland wins, and I'm always pleased when the Polish team progresses. But the question is, what would happen if Poland and Germany were both in the final? And then? Then I'd be rooting for Germany. I've more emotional ties with them, and they're the better team. You've actually been in Germany longer than you were in Poland. You came in 1988 when you were three. Why did your parents want to leave Poland? Well, the way things were in communist Poland, with corruption, political persecution, no freedom of speech, there was no future, not for my parents or many others. Because we have German ethnic roots, we were eligible to come to Germany as refugees. It was an opportunity, and my parents took it. They emigrated to Friedland and moved into a refugee shelter. What was it like? They went to Hamburg. They arrived in Travemünde and went on to Hamburg. The German border police, the BGS, sent them on to Friedland. The central reception camp was there back then. By the way, you can visit it today. There's a good exhibit there. We were taken care of there and then sent to Urnemassen in North Rhine-Westphalia. After that, we were placed in emergency housing. Those were apartments. Well, you wouldn't really call them that. It was a room next door to an asylum seeker's hostel. There was no bathroom or kitchen. My parents, my brother and I started leading a normal life there. We learned German at the Goethe Institute. There were lots of them back then. Gradually, working life began. But the living conditions were quite spartan. When you compare that with what Germany does for refugees today, are there major differences? There are big differences, at least in people's perception of it. The difference is, things weren't better back then. But the people were somehow more optimistic and satisfied with what the German state had made available to them. That's changed a bit. The refugee crisis has cost the conservative CDU many votes. You clearly want to point out that mistakes were made. What were they? Yes, in 2015 the situation was difficult. We didn't address its impact correctly. And that has to be that we declare safe countries of origin, for example. But even today, the Social Democrats and the Greens don't want to declare any more safe countries than there are already. They don't want rapid deportation or expulsion from Germany. You see, the problem in 2015 was that too many people came. Today, there's a different problem. Today, we're talking about how to get people out of the country who really aren't refugees at all. They're not politically persecuted and came for other reasons. That's the task we face today. But you're struggling with your own part as well as the SPD. And on your website, you're promising your voters that you won't mince words. So, Mr. Tsimiak, did the CDU deny the problem of uncontrolled immigration for too long, yes or no? For a long time, we had a situation that caused me a great deal of concern, and that is we couldn't keep going on like this. It was clear to me in the summer and autumn of 2015 that we had to do something. Ultimately, that happened with the agreement with Turkey that closed the Balkan route. But yes or no, were the problems denied for too long? We had a situation that went on for too long. Now we're trying to solve the problems and we have to look forward. What can we do now to resolve the situation? Yes or no, did the Conservatives block an immigration law for too long? Was that a mistake? I think we need one. But you are asking me yes or no. The question of an immigration law has nothing to do with the situation in 2015. But it could and should have been controlled better. No, it couldn't have, because the people who came then weren't refugees. They weren't politically persecuted or often didn't have any education. An immigration law back then would not have made a difference. 
But now you're packaging the whole thing as a new initiative, and a numerical limit on immigration is part of it, yes or no? <laughs> you can't always answer complicated questions with yes or no, but of course... But you'd support it, you've said that. Yes, we just can't keep taking in people who are coming for other reasons, economic refugees who are coming to Germany. We've got to limit that, and it can be expressed clearly in numbers. If you ask me, we need limitations for people who are not coming in as refugees. I'll say that clearly, yes. So you favour a solution based on contingencies. If contingencies had been valid in 1988, could it be that Paul Ziemiak would not have become a German politician? Yes or no? There the correct answer is no, because my parents came in as ethnic German refugees and they had a right to come to Germany. The ethnic German emigres back then were recognised German citizens, and that's still the case today. I must say clearly that the people who were driven out of Germany's former eastern territories after 1945, those people who came as ethnic German emigres, you can't compare them to the people who are coming from the Maghreb countries, for example. You're talking about a solution based on contingencies then, not an upper limit. An upper limit that you demanded yourself in 2015 and 2016. Is that because the expression upper limit really gets on Chancellor and party leader Angela Merkel's nerves? No. No, no because the situation has changed. In 2015, we didn't know when it would end or if a million or more people would come into the country. The Balkan route was still open. There was no agreement with Turkey. It was clear to me then that it couldn't keep on going like that endlessly. In that situation, an upper limit was necessary. Now the situation is different and we're talking about different solutions. I don't see what we should do differently. Do you know who said that? I know who said it. Angela Merkel said it after bringing in the worst conservative election results since 1949. Does the Chancellor and party leader bother you sometimes? Naturally, the CDU bothers me sometimes. I'm the chairman of the conservative youth organizations in Bavaria and the rest of Germany, and we want to be a thorn in the party's side. In that respect, there's a great deal I disagree with. I believe in the future. We've got to ensure that we achieve better election results, and part of that is looking at the results we had and looking at the campaign critically. So, let's keep doing the same in principle is not the conservative renewal you're calling for. I wouldn't sign my name to a statement that said I have no idea about what we could have done better. What could be done better now? What are you demanding? We need clear language. Clear language means that when people come to us as immigrants, for example, then it's clear that those who come who are not allowed to stay must be deported as quickly as possible. Anyone who commits a crime here has no business in this country. We've seen the Star of David and other Jewish symbols being burned in the streets and hatred being spread. I'll tell you honestly that when those kinds of people aren't German citizens, they've got to leave the country. They have nothing to do with our society. You're promising the voters clear language. I've also found a clear quote on this topic. Which path should Germany follow? You said, the majority of young people do not want a woman in a headscarf presenting court decisions in the name of the people. Is that playing directly to AFD voters? No, that's aimed at people who say, I want to live in a country where court decisions in the name of the people are not conflated with Muslim or Islamic symbols. I think many people, even liberals, don't want that mix. I can't imagine it, and I don't want to. The AFD would advocate that in an instant. That doesn't bother you? I don't care what the AFD wants. As head of the Young Conservatives, I'll represent my ideas in Parliament and only if I'm convinced the policies benefit this country and if people expect them from politicians. My positions are not shaped by what other parties say. How do you perceive Germany's future? Should the parties that lost the most votes in the last election, the Conservatives and Social Democrats, now form a grand coalition? I'm no fan of a grand coalition. We need polarization in the centre. The question is, what are the options? We should seriously consider whether the SPD and CDU can develop a policy for this country's future and form a stable government. That would be decisive.
If we find a compromise, I'd be pleased about a grand coalition, even though I wasn't promoting one. Sometimes with the SPD, I wonder when Frau Schwesig, her state premier, says she's baffled by the phrase, first the country, then the party. If that's so, we won't get together at all. The motto should be, first the country, then the party. Don't you have some understanding that the Social Democrats have lost votes through coalitions with the Conservatives, that they're saying, obviously, the people don't want that? No, they're in a really difficult situation, but I don't believe they're puzzled. The Social Democrats seem to run down their achievements in a campaign. For example, they fail to mention that we're doing so well in Germany today because of the Agenda 2010 reforms that SPD Chancellor Gerhard Schröder pushed through. They've taken responsibility for a lot of things, but wouldn't recognize that. Instead, they said, what we did in government in the past wasn't good, so vote for us. No one understands that. Mr. Tsimiak, now we're coming to our three incomplete sentences that you complete for us. I like that Social Democrat leader Martin Schulz. That he comes from North Rhine-Westphalia, that's always good. And otherwise, that he's got an excellent sense of humor, that's good too, regardless of political affiliation. I expect that the future state premier of Bavaria, Markus Söder, makes good policy for Bavaria and is the right candidate for the office of state premier. In 20 years I'll see myself on DW, when I'm staying somewhere in a hotel. Or as a minister in Berlin? I think in politics it's better to consider if you've got the right concepts for the country rather than wondering about your own future. Paul Zimiak, thank you very much. You're welcome.